Okay. I think you should start. Okay, for first of all, I want to say thank you for tuning in again for our session. Uh, hopefully, I can get some more questions and learnings for you today. And uh, hi, everyone from the Philippines. Stay strong. Okay, I think we should start. Okay, so for today, again, we're going to learn about ROM basics. Okay, so I will going to talk about our ROM production process, how is it made. Uh, I'm doing this session for those people who do not tune in last time. Uh, there's a lot of comments, lot of uh, the DM me, PM me that they missed my uh, live. So I'm doing this session again for you guys. And, uh, and for those who tune in, this is a refresher for you. And then I hope, I hope uh, you get something and you learn a lot from this session. And then uh, I think this will start, okay? So, first. First, I'm going to talk about ROM, okay? So, what is ROM, okay? Uh, for me, ROM is a, uh, what can I say about ROM? Uh, ROM is a one of those uh, versatile and uh, notable spirit. Uh, you can, uh, I can see it mostly at the bar. Uh, some of ROM are, are age, uh, age and unage. Some are light and dark. Some are spice and flavored. And there are ROMs also that is overproof. So, I'm going to tackle some of those uh, important things about RAM, especially in their production, so that you get better understanding about of this awesome liquid. Okay? So, first is, first is, what is RAM? Okay? So, I have here uh, three things you need to know in terms of RAM. First is, RAM is made from sugarcane. Okay? To be able to call a RAM, you must be made with sugar cane, okay? So what is sugar cane? Actually, sugar cane uh, is a type of uh, plant we're in. It, we, we, we use, this, we use that, uh, that, that uh, sugar cane to make our rum, okay? But not, but not really the sugar cane. It's the byproduct of the sugar cane. For example, the molasses and the sugar cane juice. So what is a molasses? So molasses, okay, it's a thick, thick liquid that the uh, that's uh, so sticky and dark that most of the rum, a majority of rum maker uh, uses this ingredient. It's a byproduct of sugar cane. So, how, how we can get molasses? First is, they're going to harvest the sugar cane from the field. And then, uh, after harvesting, they're going to press it. They're going to extract the juice. And then, they're going to cook it or refine it. Okay. The first refinement of the sugar cane, that's what we use for our coffee, the white and brown sugar. Okay. So after they refine, after making sugar, all we left is this, this thick, this thick uh, substance that dark and so sticky, uh, what we call molasses. Again, majority of rum makers or rum producers uses molasses. Uh, so th that's why we call it uh, rum industrial or uh, rum tra traditional. So uh, like majority of our rum makers uh, uses molasses, and some rum uses sugarcane juice. Okay, sugarcane juice. So uh, aside from molasses, some rum use uses uh, sugarcane juice. So what we call rum agrico and cachaca is our great example of sugarcane uh, sugar cane juice uh, uh, rum okay so these are the the types of uh, byproduct of sugarcane that uses uh, to make rum okay second is uh, second is rum must be made in the country that grows sugarcane okay so remember that as long as you have sugarcane in your country you can produce rum Okay, so uh, uh, to better understand, for me, to better understand the rum, 
uh, you need to look for the country of origin, where it's produced, where is it made, where is it distilled, uh, to better understanding the rum. So I have here like uh, the different uh, what we call rum. We have the rum, rum, and rum. Uh, to better understand the rum again, we must look for its uh, country of origin, like English style rum. We also have the Spanish type of rum, what we call rum, and uh, and our French style rum, which is the uh, sugar cane or the agricole. So, for me, to better understand rum, uh, you mis must look to its uh, what we call the country of origin in making rum, okay, for better understanding. And uh, and don't call me on this because right now we're talking about rum. In terms of rum making, there's always exception to the rule. Not because that is, that is a English style rum, that means they're going to follow on how they make the the rum. So some some rum some rum producers like they tweak their own way on how to make the rum unique. Uh, there's no there's no bad on that. It's just that, that that's their own style. So in making rum, it, there's always an exception to the rule. It's just that. If you need to really understand rum, uh, you must like look for its country of origin. Okay? And then lastly, rum must be bottled at a minimum of 37% alcohol by volume. Okay? 37%, above 37%. So that's why majority of our rum is around 40% alcohol and some are overproof. That more than 40%, some are like 75.5% alcohol. Uh, so rum. So Rum must be bottled a minimum of 37% ABV. Okay. Um, to summarize that, rum, again, rum is made from sugarcane byproduct, whether from molasses or sugarcane. Next is rum must be made at the country that grows sugarcane, primarily Caribbean country. Those uh, those countries are are like the pioneer in making rum. Okay. And lastly, rum must be bottled at a above or a minimum of 37% alcohol by volume. So, uh, so that's that are the things that you need to remember in terms of rum. So, how is it made? Okay, how is it made? How can we make rum? First, we have the three ingredient. All rum, all rum in the world, they only have three ingredient to produce. First, we need sugar that comes from the sugarcane juice or molasses next we need to have yeast okay? so what is yeast actually majority of uh, uh, in uh, culinary uses yeast for, for bread for baking uh, even in making spirit we also use yeast so every so for me yeast is a, is a microorganism whether there's an oxygen whenever there's an oxygen there's a yeast it's a natural yeast but now uh, in terms of spirits, making spirits, they, they're going to cultivate their own yeast to make it a proprietary or should I say signature signature style of their yeast. And lastly, water. Okay? When you have these three ingredients, you can make your own rum. Okay? So that's how they made rum. Okay? Okay, so when you have this three ingredient, our first should I say procedure in making rum is what we call fermentation. Okay, so when we're going to combine the water, the sugar, and the yeast, the first procedure in making rum is the fermentation. So what happens during fermentation? Yeast eat sugar. That's the only thing yeast eat. Uh, it consumes sugar and then it yeast produces two byproducts carbon dioxide and alcohol um, that's uh, uh, this is the birth stage actually I call this fermentation is the birth stage of alcohol uh, where on this stage we also are uh, getting some uh, some alcohol already carbon dioxide by 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 using yeast okay so the, the term for fermentation is uh, Term for for fermentation is a uh, uh, turning sugar into alcohol by using yeast. 
Okay. So that's the fermentation stage. Okay. So the maximum or probably the maximum uh, the maximum alcohol content that we can get during fermentation stage is up to 18 up to 18 to 20 percent alcohol by volume and uh, uh, sometimes lower than that it depends on the distillers or the producer sometimes you can get up to five to eight percent alcohol by volume during fermentation stage so having said that to be able to call the spirits you must we must go on to another step that we call distillation stage. So after we get the alcohol, after we have the alcohol during fermentation, we need to distill it. Okay? So distillation. Distillation is a, in a, to put it on a simplest form, it's like a big kettle. You know, the, the one we use for boiling our waters at home. Uh, something like that. If, it's just that it's a bigger bigger format. We need to boil, we need to boil our fermented liquid, what we call wash or must, M-U-S-T, must. So we need to boil it in order to produce a high spirit by using these stills or this equipment or this tool. Okay? We're going to separate the alcohol and water by means of boiling. Okay. As we all know, I hope you'll still remember, the boiling point of water is around 100 degrees. Okay. So it will, it will evaporate at around 100 degrees. But for alcohol to evaporate, you must have at least 78% uh, percent, uh, 70 per, 78 degree Fahrenheit to, uh, to be able for the, for the spirit or for the alcohol to evaporate lower than the water. So just maintaining that uh, the temperature and then the alcohol will evaporate okay so this uh, is a sample of a uh, distill installation so we're going to boil the mass or our fermented liquid and turns into vapor so the vapor rises and then pass through to a tube and then we're going to condense it condenser is like a tube with a cold water on it a cold tube wherein the vapor the vapor will turn it again to liquid. Okay. The more you distill, the higher alcohol you get. It will depend on the steel that we're going to use. It will depend. So if you're going to use if you're going to use the copper pot steel, copper pot steel, the higher the higher ABV that we can get from copper pot steel is around 69% alcohol. While hence to column steel, we can get up to up to 96% alcohol. Okay? Again, it depends on the producer or or, or or the style they want to, to have on the rum. Depends on the steel that you're going to use. Okay. So after we steal, okay, after we steal our space, so we're going to have a clear neutral spirit that is higher in alcohol okay that's higher in alcohol sometimes sometimes when they use column steel some of the flavors are are evaporating as well or gone that's why after we after we distill our spirit we're going to age it or mature it in an oak cast okay majority of rum uses uses a uh, oak and in, in their maturation or in aging process Okay, so, so providing additional flavor and natural uh, natural flavor to our rum, okay? So what happens during our aging or maturation inside the wood, okay? By the way guys, if you find it, if I'm too fast or if I... Uh, if you want to uh, get back to another topic, please let me know. Put your comments uh, on the comment section. If you have any questions, please let me know again. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, what happens to the rum when you put it on the on the on the on the barrel? No? So as you can see on my illustration, so we have here a barrel, half half barrel. As you see, it has this charcoal inside because majority of our bottles is been roasted, or is being charred or recharred for two reasons. First is to remove the excess alcohol that been used. Uh, of this barrel and the second second is to make the wood of the of the barrel to release another flavor or to caramelize again so that when you put the rum inside okay, it can get those flavors from the wood so what happens during what happens during the during the maturation first flavor imparted by the oak okay that's the main reason why we use the oak because Oak has this flavor where it imparts to our rum. That's why majority of our rum producers use oak. That's why we have this term in when you taste some rum and even whiskey, it has this what they call oaky notes or woody notes. They get that notes because of these barrels. Okay. Next is flavor become more mature. The more the rum or the more the spirits taste on the barrel the flavor become mature okay from very light from very light flavor it become more mature it, become, it becomes more complex in terms of its taste like for example if you're going to use some grapes fresh grapes or uh, uh, green grapes when you put it into barrel it becomes flavor and in, in, in state for bottle for a longer period of time probably uh, 25 years or 30 years of the barrel that great flavor become raisins it gives more complexity of the, in terms of its taste it gives more layers of flavor that's why we use barrels in aging our rum okay next is oxidation oxygen helps to develop the flavor and aroma inside the barrel okay it helps to release all the flavor it, it, it develops and, uh, because of this oxidation okay so when the when the barrels are placed in the warehouses and it's it evaporating the oxygen inside the barrel helps to develop the flavor inside the barrels okay next is charcoal layer acts as a filter the charcoal itself here the layers of the charcoal inside the barrel it acts as a uh, should I say it acts as a filter inside it filters all the impurities of our spirit and gives out gives out the flavor of the wood to our rum thanks to the charcoal it, it helps to filter all those impurities that that doesn't need inside our rum right and lastly evaporation concentrates the flavor okay so evaporation concentrates the flavor so we have this term in spirit what we call angels share is the it's the liquid or or the vapor that goes out on the barrel okay so the liquid that goes out the barrel by means of evaporation so what happens is whatever left on the barrel the liquid that left is here is so concentrated so flavorful okay that's why some some aged rum and even even whiskey some aged whiskey uh, they're expensive because of this uh, this evaporation okay some some liquid are lost but the the one that left inside the barrel is so flavorful so delicious that that's why it makes more expensive okay so these are the main reason why we use this, uh, the barrels in uh, in aging or maturation our rum okay so after after we age or mature our rum all rum or majority of rum is being blend or blended or being blended okay or being blend to a specific taste profile okay i as far as i know i haven't seen any cast strength rum as of now cast, oh, sorry single barrel single barrel rum Okay. Uh, majority of rum that I know was being blend. Okay. When you say blending, they're going to mix 
they going to mix uh, they going to mix they going to mix uh, two or more barrel just to produce just to produce uh, a single profile or a single rum they need to to mix two or more barrels okay so uh, that's the reason why we do blending okay to mix different rum to mix different barrels okay and majority of rum though they don't have distillery they can buy they can buy rum from different distillery and blend for themselves okay so if even you don't have any distillery even if you have any equipment to do so uh, you can buy you can buy rum from different distillery and then blend it for yourself and produce your own rum so that's how should i say uh versity of this this spirits is okay there's no exception to the rule in making in rum okay so that's the reason why uh we do the the blending and i want to emphasize these steps before we're going to put on the bottle the charcoal filtration okay do you know that the Bacardi rum are the pioneered in this in this process, the charcoal filtration that makes our rum unique? Okay, from aguardiente that that's so strong and harsh, because Don Facundo, our founder, Don Facundo Bacardi, uh, discovered the charcoal filtration. Majority of our rums are being aged. All our rums, by the way. All our rums is being aged and then goes through a filtration to make it smoother, to make to make it smoother and uh, to have this balanced flavor on our rum. And I'm proud to say that Bacardi Bacardi rums are the pioneer in charcoal filtration. Okay, so after uh, uh, it depends on the on depends on the master blender depends on master blender whether after we blend we filter sometimes we filter first and then we blend it depends on our master blender on on the process or should i say the steps in uh, in the in the in our production but i'm proud to say that charcoal filtration is the reason why we pioneer all our rums it makes our rum unique to other rums and you know the bacardi superior or the carta blanca it's being aged as well, but since we we discovered this one, the charcoal it goes through a special charcoal filtration where it it's stripped down its color and turns to white, so that makes it more flavorful, uh, smoother. Uh, if, if even even uh, making your own cocktail, a uh, refreshing cocktail, it, it doesn't affect the taste of your cocktail. Uh, it doesn't dominate the cocktail. Uh, and that's how we're going to make so very mixable mixable rum our carta blanca bacardi carta blanca or our bacardi superior because of this process the charcoal filtration so after we after we blend after we filter we're going to put water just to cut down the avb or the alcohol content to a desired alcohol content sometimes 40 percent majority is 40 percent so we cut down by putting water before we're going to put on the bottle and then uh, deliver to your bar okay so that's how the process is so um, making rum okay so I'm going to check I'm going to check my comments if you have question please let me know I'm going to check now some comments before I proceed if I if I miss some question Hi Jason, how are you? <laughs> What's up, mga panike? So far, I didn't see any questions. So please, if you have any question, please write down in the comments. Okay, we have this question from uh, Julius Tiff. Difference between rum and rum. 
the rum with R U M and the rum that R H U M. Okay, good question. Okay, good question. So what's the difference of the two? So I'm going to go back on this topic, the difference of rum and rum. Okay, so when you use when the, the when you use the R U M or the, the English style spelling of rum. It means they use molasses or what we call the rum industrial. Okay, molasses, rum is the spelling, and ron is the Spanish term of rum. And then it's going to use the sugarcane juice. The rum is spells R H U M. That means uh, it is a uh, rum agricole. Okay, or cachaca. So that's the difference of the two. When you use the R U M, he uses molasses or majority of rum use the molasses and if you're going to use the RHUM it means they use the sugarcane juice or a rum agricole okay hope I answer your question do this so we have we have another question here uh, which herb can infuse with rum okay which herb so which herb can infuse with rum by ndk 1997 all right good question so in in uh well for me in infusing especially especially herb okay well it depends on on what cocktail or what drink i'm going to make uh if like for example, I I I made an infusion before during my bartender time. I infuse uh, basil and chili to Bacardi Superior. So uh, basil chili together. So it gives more of those uh, should I say uh, herbal at a little bit of spicy kick on my infusion. So actually, you can you can infuse anything as long as as long as you're going to use that infusion. You have this what we call a recipe prior infusion, so that so that the 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 what they call the 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 infusion that you're going to make will not going to be like stay at at the bar, okay? Make sure when you're going to infuse uh, things, okay? It's a little tip. We're going to infuse any spirit, especially rum. You must have a recipe together with it at the same time you're going to use it okay so that hindi siya sayang uh, it doesn't waste okay so but in terms of infusion you can infuse anything you can put lemongrass you can put uh, star anise you can put uh, pepper okay anything anything you can infuse but make sure before you make infusion you have already a recipe or should I say a drink that you're going to use that infusion Okay, so that's a tip for you guys. Okay, so we have another question here. How about white rum? What is the different process to get to get that? Okay, so white rum. Okay, so to get to get the white rum. Okay, some. Some of the some of the rum producer after they distilled, okay, after they get the distillant, after distillation, after this process, okay, after this process, some white rum are being uh, being cut down on the side AVB by putting water, okay, and then after this after distillation, after distillation they're going to cut with water and then bottling already. Okay, that's a white rum. What makes our rum different is Bacardi Superior and uh, Bacardi Carta Blanca. What makes it different? Our rum is being aged for a shorter period of time, and then we filter it with a charcoal filtration just to strip down, just to strip down the color of our of our rum, our Bacardi Superior or our white rum. Okay, but majority of rum after distillation they put water just to cut down the alcohol by volume and then 
battling already. But for us, what makes us different? We age our rum. After we age our rum for a shorter period of time, it undergoes a charcoal filtration just to strip down the color to give more complexity of flavor on our white rum. Okay? So we also have another question here. Is 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 it safe to say Agrico and Cachaca are the same? Okay, that that's a good question as well. Is it safe to say that Agrico and Cachaca are the same? Uh, well, generally or technically, they are the same. But Cachaca, it has this what we call the they hold this uh, uh, what we call the DOC Cachaca. A DOC we're in to be able to say cachaca you must be made in Brazil and uh, as far as I know they, they producing rum for more than 400 years they protected this process that's why uh, they have they they want to call it cachaca rather than agricole okay because of their because of their roots in making the rum for more than 400 years that's why they put a certain name on it that's why they call it cachaca Brazilian rum unlike other other country that produces uh, rum by using sugar cane, uh, a majority of them are French, uh, French style or being colonized by French. Uh, they call it agricole uh, because they use a sugar cane juice. Uh, but te technically, agricole and cachaca, you can so you can uh, you can say they're the same. But in terms of cachaca, they protected by DOC or what we call the what we call a, a, a give, uh, award giving body we're in there's a certain product that are they going to use that is very exclusive to them okay so that's why they call it cachaca or brazilian rum i hope i answered your question but uh, that was a great question okay what are the best mixer for rum by lynn louis okay what are the best mixers from rum Okay. I'm going to answer that. And by the way, on the 30th of March and April 1st, I'm going to do some rum cocktails. Okay, So reserve that date, put in your calendar, March 30th and April 1st. Okay. I'm going to do some rum cocktail session for you guys. Okay, To answer your question, what are the best mix or mixer for rum? Okay. Uh, what I love about rum is this spirit this rum is so very versatile so very should i say easy to easy to easy to mix you can you can uh, you can mix everything actually using a uh, soda using fresh juices even herb and spice you can uh, you can mix with rum you can even uh, make a simple what we call bacardi mismo we're using bacardi superior with soda water and then uh, just a squeeze of lime that's it you have a uh, bacardi mismo uh, very simple and easy to drink uh, easy to make as well at your home even cuba libre cuba libre is so easy to make all, all you have to do is get a bacardi gold a coke and a lime and that's it okay rum is so easy to easy to mix uh, you can mix anything okay your favorite food your, fav your favorite uh, uh, should i say your favorite uh, fruits, herb, spice, you can put it on the rum, you can mix it. Okay, that's how versatile this spirit is. Okay. What are the what bitters can we use that are good with rum? Okay. Another good question. Bitters is a uh, uh, by the way, for those who don't know, bitters is like a it's like a salt and pepper for the chef. No? It, it, it enhances our flavor. Uh, so in terms of what bitters that we can, we can uh, use or are, are good for rum, actually everything, ev every bitters that you, you can name. Angostura bitters, patient bitters, orange bitters, uh, you can use that. Okay? But I have a suggestion for you if you're going to make uh, like an old fashioned. Okay? We have a, we have a, a recipe for that. Use Bacardi 8 uh, as a as a main base. Bacardi 8, and then whatever whatever uh, whatever bitters that you have at home, 
chocolate bitters, orange bitters, angostura bitters. Uh, you can use that and a dash of sugar. Okay? It makes a perfect old fashion. Okay? Bacardi 8, any type of bitters, a splash of sugar. Okay? Sugar syrup, it will do. Okay? That's a good recipe for you uh, in terms of uh, using bitters. Okay, we have another question here by I am Nikox. Does charcoal filtration affect the flavor notes of the rum? Good question. Okay, good question. Actually, charcoal filtration. Uh, why we filter our 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 rum to make it more should I say balance of its taste and uh, remove some impurities in terms of like. In terms of like affect the flavor, I think does it it does it affect the flavors? It balance all the flavors. So whatever there's that's why when you taste a rum, every flavor, every flavor that you can get from the wood, you're going to taste on our rum because of the filtration. At the same time, it it becomes more smoother. It doesn't have this sort sort of harshness undertone on your throat because of this filtration. But in terms of uh. Uh, flavor it balances out the flavor because of this uh, because of the charcoal filtration. Okay. Okay. No questions so far. Okay. But thank you again, guys, for uh, for those questions. Okay. Next, famous feature. I will continue now. Famous feature of rum. So first, I will introduce to you to Christopher Colombo. For those who don't know Christopher Colombo, uh, he is he's an explorer and in search of spice, he went to different different continents and eventually made it to to Caribbean country. Okay, and then uh, and then uh, they're the one who brings should I say brings sugar cane. Right? They, they're the one who brings sugar cane uh, to the Caribbean country, and thanks to him, we have uh, we have now rum that we can uh, drink and have a party. Okay, so that's one of the famous uh, feature for rum. Second is uh, second is a uh, famous feature of rum, Don the Beachcomber. Okay, Don the Beachcomber is a uh, is a uh, what we call they are the they they are the one who started the. The Tikka Revolution, okay. The Don the Beach Comber. Uh, so, so before when I was starting as a bartender, so they have a lot of rum cocktails, no. And then eventually, when I read this book about the uh, about about uh, about the uh, Caribbean country or Caribbean rum, right? Uh, try to read the book the 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 portion of Caribbean, wherein they're going to explain the different types of. Uh, History, different uh, people uh, being involved during the Tikka Revolution, and this guy emerged as the they're the one who started it, the Tikka Revolution. So now, when I'm going to make cocktails, I have this what we call the Cuban style of making a cocktail. The Cuban style are the mojito, the daiquiri, the old Cuban, or the Cuba Libre, and we have this the island. Okay, the island are. Are the piña coladas, mai tai, jungle bird, wherein they use tropical, uh, tropical juices at the same time, uh, fun vessel like the tiki tiki glass. So the Don Beach Comber is one of those people who pioneered, uh, pioneered the tiki, uh, tiki tiki revolution. Okay, so those are the famous feature for our rum. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Captain Jack Sparrow of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, his favorite drink, rum. Okay. And fun facts about rum, earliest rum were made way back 1640 in excess of molasses. Okay, so imagine 1640, they have already making their own rum on that time. But since 1640, 1640 is, uh, should I say, there's no, 
modern technology that time. There's no modern technique in creating rum. That's why they produce a very harsh, very crude spirit. So before, they call it aguadiente or means fire water in English. So aguadiente or fire water, really like a, like so harsh, so crude the spirit. Uh, you don't you don't going to use it to uh, to make parties. Uh, Agua gente they use as a as a medicine, an antibiotic. Before, uh, like if you you cut yourself, and then it is bleeding, you're going to put Agua gente on it just to anti anti antibacterial thing. So before, run before is so harsh and crude because uh, because of lacking of modern technology that time and the possible 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 uh, or probably where rum the rum uh, rum name come from the word rambolian that means commotion uh, because every time they drink rum they have commotion so that's why they call it rambolian and then eventually it became rum okay rum spread around the world because of the British sailors, even the explorer at that time. Because before, when they explore in search for spice, they don't have any monetary that can buy commodities at that time. In order to buy goods, you need to do like exchange or what they call barter. Okay, like for example, if they want to have some coffee, they go to Brazil, and then their coffee will be exchanged with rum. And then if they want to have some some cloth like silk, you now they go to into China and the silk will be exchanged of rum okay so rum is been like being famous around the world because of these guys the British Navy or the explorers and even even the pirates even the pirates no uh, the, the pirates of the pirates of the Caribbean the captains Captain Jack Sparrow the the, the famous spirits that he wants to drink you no know, rum okay and even if you're going to work in this galley ship before you, you won't get any money to work in the ship. After you work in the ship, you will get barrels and barrels of rum as a payment because you're working on this, on this, uh, on this, in the ship. And then, and that barrels of rum, when you, when you, when you go out the ship, and then you can buy it with for your clothing, you can buy it for your, for your food and shelter, all those rum. So that's the reason why uh, rum become more famous around the world, right? Any questions, guys? Do you still have question? Okay. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learn a lot. And then, again, on the on the thirtieth of March and April first, I'm going to share to you some rum cocktails. And maybe, just maybe, we're going to use some. Uh, tools that uh, you can only find at home and then probably you can you can suggest actually now after my after this uh, 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 IG live after the session if you have any any suggestion or any any uh, things on your mind like on your mind right now like cocktails that you want me to to do on the session please let me know okay uh, DM me or PM me okay um, I think that's it, okay? I hope you learn, okay? And again, thank you very much. Stay positive. You're going to get through this. Stay at home, please, okay? Again, thank you guys for tuning in. See you again next time. Bye-bye.